Welcome back everybody uh, to Revit 2016 uh, Project B. Right, uh, luckily enough we're managing to get a couple of videos in today, maybe another one later on. Um, but the previous uh, video was about um, getting some additional levels in. So if I jump into my uh, an elevation, okay, we can see there we added these two levels here and we used a couple of methods and the reason being is we needed this first floor plan as a top constraint for our stairs that we're about to put in. So I'm going to go back into my ground floor plan okay, and we're going to go and sort of hack around with a few stairs and see what happens. So if I press on the architecture tab Okay, now we're going to go to the circulation section. Okay, and then we have a stairs button. And if I click on the down arrow, okay, we see two options there. We have a, a stair by component and a stair by sketch. Okay, in this video, we're going to use the stair by sketch method. Uh, it's a method that I learned to use Revit. Um, we, in the early days and step by components are comparatively early or late edition uh, but my preference is for um, step by sketch I just feel like get a bit more control um, other Revit users might disagree but uh, this is the one I'm going to run with so I'm just going to click on step by sketch okay good idea to save the project always okay so we go into our sketch mode when we're doing this Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just have a quick look at the properties here on the left hand side. So um, these are the instance pr 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 the instance parameters. So these only apply to the set of stairs that we are about to draw right now. Okay, and if I go into edit type, these are the rules that apply to the stairs um, as a whole for that particular family, th for this type here. Okay, but we're not going to change any of that. Um, and what we've got here is fairly okay. So, you know, with regards to width and notation. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in the, in the properties is we need to start tell the stairs, confirm with the stairs the base level, okay, which is uh, the ground floor. And we want to make sure that we get the top level correct. Now it's not going to be the ceiling level, we don't run the ceiling stairs there, we actually run the stairs to the first floor plat level, okay, because obviously that's where they're finished and where the landing's going to be. Okay, so that's the first step. Now you just have to be very, very careful with that. If you're running a project with multiple levels, okay, and you chuck, try to chuck in a new set of stairs, um, Revit will just look for the next available level, okay, even if it is only one rise or high or anything like that, that's what Revit will look for. So you have to change that each time, okay, just make sure you get the stairs in the right place. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to use the stairs in, in the simplest way possible initially, okay, and that is what we do where we just cr create a run, okay, and that's just basically we click a, we draw a line or a shape and Revit will build the stairs accordingly. So the easiest way to visualize this too is actually not within the project at the stage but perhaps a little bit further out. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so quick check, stairs, ground floor, first floor plan, uh, and we're doing a run. So what we're going to do now is just as a straight run. So left click, drop the stairs down, okay, and you will see there, um, as we create the stairs, it actually gives us a count. So we've got 10, 10 tells us how many rises have been created and how many remain. Okay, so 10, so it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it's always grey, um, I haven't adjusted that uh, text style yet. Okay, but I'm just going to left click. Okay, that finish that basically creates the run. Okay, and the blue line is the run. Okay, so we've got some green lines which are the boundaries, and each of these black lines is a riser. 
So there it says 17 rows is created, none remaining. Even after I've sketched it, if I just pull the the run line back, let go, there we go, 14 rows is created, 3 remaining. Okay, 1, 2, 3, let's drag that out it's all done. Okay, so 17 rises, uh, maximum uh, 18 rises in a flight of stairs before we have to put a landing in, so we're okay there. Okay, now what we're going to do is just finish the edit mode, so I'm going to click the tick. Okay, and there we go. So there's our stairs that automatically give us some railings. We get stringers, we get um, a little bit of text there, so it's the up button and an up arrow. Let's have a look in 3D. There it is there. So like I said, a lot easier to visualize if we are in outside the, the building at this stage. So there you are, there's the default. Okay, rises going, nice big fat stringers, and a couple of railings there. So and the beauty of these railings is we can actually pick on those separately. I can delete those if I want to as well. So right here. So we're gonna keep that one there. Um, we are just going to put a straight line run of stairs in this design anyway. But um, I'll show you another quick version of stairs and then we'll, which we will put a turn into them or something. So back to the command. So stair, stair by sketch. Right, there we go, top level. So again, I have to make sure that my stairs go to the correct line. So there we go, first floor plan. Right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to left click, drop it, start my run, say about there. So I've got about nine remaining. And now what I can do is I can bring my cursor out, I say about there, left click, and reverse it. Okay, and what Revit will do is it will automatically create the landing. There we go, left click. So we go, nice little thing there. And what I can do is I can left sweep all of that. Okay, and I can nudge that. So use my up and down arrow so I can squeeze that up a little bit if I like, so I close this gap in here. Um, if you're not happy with the design then we can go, right, well I want to take a riser off there and I might want to whack a riser in there. Okay, so and if I click the finish mode, have a look in 3D, there we go. Okay, so by, by my own admission I don't, you know, the, the stairs are never 100% perfect, but for the sake of what we need for floor plans, etc., these are uh, pictorially certainly accurate. Um, and when they come up in section, they're pretty good as well. So, okay. Now I'm just going to show you one other thing that we can do in here, and I'm just going to go back into this set of stairs here. So, I'm going to click on the stair itself, not the railing, the stair. I'm going to go to my edit sketch. So I'm going to go back into sketch mode here. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to click on in the sketch mode, I'm going to click on riser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some new risers. One, two, and three. Okay. Now what you can see there in the in the count is that we've says that we've created 20 rises and minus three remain. That's Revit's way of telling us that we have too many. So we can basically just go and reduce that run line accordingly. There we go. 17 rises created, none remaining. Finish our sketch. Go back into our 3D. Let's find an angle that works. There we go. There's our winders that we've just created. Okay, so it does get a little bit untidy in here, but again, don't stress too much about it at this early stage. Okay, so I'm just going to select all of that, delete them. The message came up there, no worries. Now I'm going to go back to my ground floor plan. Now I'm just going to put these stairs properly in. So I'm going to go stair, stair by sketch. Make sure I get my top constraint correct. We're just going to do a run. Okay, 
there we go 17 rises now remaining finish the sketch there now all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab those stairs I am going to use my move tool there so MV is the default uh, code for or shortcut for move I can just click on that very similar to most other things that I'm just going to choose that constraint there and I'm going to attach it there okay so the idea with this design um, freestyle as I am is that we'll probably have some sort of entrance in here some sort of porch or something like that okay and we'll see the stairs there so the option is to go up the stairs and then branch off into this zone here I'm not too sure what's going to happen so let's just uh, we'll wait and see on that one okay right that's it for the stairs oh hold on one more thing let's just jump in have a quick look there they are sitting in our design ready for the next phase Okay, righty-ho. Okay, we will see you later.